Man, that's dark. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I was just thinking as, as that uh, music started. It's such a beautiful, nice, sunny spring day, early summer day here in New York City. And then this like dark, creepy sound is like, that just doesn't fit the vibe today. That's all right. We control the vibe. How's everybody doing? We got Luminous Cloud first in the chat today. What's up? Josh Holiday's here. Totalist is here. What's up, Rex84 from the UK? Data Rebel. Manuel Gloda in Leipzig. Regular freestyle videos is here. Acid Bat from Baummeister in Berlin. Cosmic J. What are you doing watching guitar videos on YouTube, huh? Hello, Farning. And Soul Machine. Yeah, we tried out the Drift. You're asking about Ableton Drift. I did that a, a little bit with it when it came out some weeks ago. It's pretty cool. Anyway, let's get into it. Starting a little late today. Thanks for bearing with me as I feel kind of slow and chill on this beautiful, sunshiny day. Cooped up here in the content studio at 343 Labs in New York City, which is where we are. And let's say, hey, welcome everybody. You know, this is Selway's Techno and Electro Saturdays. And uh, it is brought to you by 343 TV and 343 Labs Music Production School in New York City, Berlin, and online. And um, that's what we do. We, we teach classes. We do live streams. We do events. We make videos. We share what we know with you. And sometimes we charge you for it. And if you, <laughs> you know, it's a business too, right? We've got classes you can uh, get into in, uh, in person here and in Berlin and uh, online. I've got a techno course, a making techno course. I'm still working on the making electro course. It'll, it'll, it'll happen. And um, in the other room right now, we got uh, Dan Freeman here. Uh, he's a performer and artist who does a, li a live performance uh, kind of class here. Uh, he has some crazy setups with Ableton Live and controllers and custom things and it, it gets complicated, but, but he also, yeah, he also does sort of general, just, you know, how to be on in front of people. Right. So it's a nice balance of technical and uh, practical sort of performance uh, stuff that he's doing. We got another class in the other room. I think we're doing like songwriting and music theory and things like that. We got our instructor Takuma, uh, who's a newer guy here. He's been producing and editing a lot of the videos here lately, if you haven't been noticing. And then of course there's me here uh, doing the live stream every Saturday amongst other things. Oh, look at that. We got Omar Maya in the chat saying, you are attending the Berlin campus this summer. That is fantastic. Welcome. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, well, I, I'm sure you're going to have a good time. Uh, I don't know who your instructor is going to be or what course it's going to be, but thumbs up. Great to have you here. And uh, yeah, also looks like you picked up some old vinyl of mine. Yeah, I've been, I've been putting out records for a while. Some of them are pretty old. <laughs> And yes, regular freestyle videos. I am not to be confused with uh, John Elway or his football course. You know, that's funny. That, that's like an old school name you're throwing out right there, John Elway. And I remember in elementary school, this is back in the 80s, early 80s for me, the, the, uh, the custodian of my school, I'd walk down the, the, the hallway and, he, and he'd call out, hey, it's John Elway, what's up? Um, every time, it's get, it, got, it got old after a while. It was funny, but... Mm. Never been a big football guy. I just know who John Elway is because of, because of that. All right. So, yeah, another thing that is happening today is that we are not talking about the push three today. <laughs> what a deluge. What an onslaught on social media. Like, I feel like it was just hundreds of videos all of a sudden. Push three, push three, push three, push three. And honestly, I have to say, I feel a little bit, tiny bit left out. But also, you know... There was enough coverage of the Push 3. Everybody knows about it. I'm looking forward to checking it out. I hope our friends at Ableton will work with us. And, uh, you know, 343 Labs is a certified Ableton training center. So you'd think we'd have one. That's all I'm going to say right now. But anyway, no more about the Push 3. It looks cool. I can't wait to try it. What are we going to do today? Well, um, last couple of streams, I mean, you saw last week on Friday, I didn't have the camera on. I was just trying to focus on the details and working on the arrangement of that track. Um, and, you know, I've just been thinking lately, 
trying to keep some of these tracks that I'm starting and working on here and there and continuing on with the process, like getting more into like finishing tracks or moving towards finishing tracks during the live stream, you know, not just looking at a specific element or sound design or making a beat or trying a new plugin or whatever. So, um, it's Electro Saturdays and I'm picking up where I left off with a sketch I've been working on a couple weeks ago. And, um, yeah, it's kind of deep. It started out actually heavier. We, um, I was doing some experimenting with putting distortion and crazy effects on drums, but then I decided eh, it was a little too much and it started going into this more musical direction and this kind of hypnotic, traveling through space kind of hit vibe, right? So that's where we're at. And, I, you know, I'm still tweaking the sounds a little bit, still polishing up some things and getting some ideas. But, you know, we can start doing a little bit of arranging today. And um, I don't know, before getting into arranging, like I said, getting a little bit into the details of some sounds, playing around with the sounds, making them kind of move around and do different things and thinking ahead about how I'm going to modulate, automate, change the sounds in the arrangement. It's pretty, I always do that. Like when I'm, especially on a track like this, it's real hypnotic. And, you know, I don't, I want to kind of have some intricacy and subtlety to some of the synths. Starting with that guy, which is a simple sound in the mini V. What did I call it? <laughs> Look at the preset name, generic plucky thing. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Real simple. And I have it in poly, it's polyphonic. I mean, it's okay, actually, whoa, I got loud. It started out monophonic. That's sort of the default behavior of, uh, of a monosynth, right? Um, you know, the mini, the mini Moog, the real mini Moog is mono, monophonic, but the plugin can be polyphonic, so it turns into kind of a poly Moog, but anyway. I put it in polyphonic mode so I could do do stuff like that. Even though most of the time we'll just be hearing one note at a time. And then using the voice detuning, in, in that way it's going to detune and float and kind of... I don't want it to go too far out of tune, although sometimes I like it. Right, so every time I play a note, a different voice is detuned slightly up or down. And I remembered that I can, in the modulation section here in the matrix, choose voice number as a modulator. And that actually, I've noticed this going through some presets, some of the cooler sounding wide stereo effect sounds in the Mini V presets have voice number controlling panning. So let's do that. And now we're going to start hearing that. It's just randomly. Now, it's not random exactly. It's just whatever voice is playing, it's going to pan it around. It's subtle, but you can hear it now. Little ear tickling things to, that I'm paying attention to today. Like things that you'd notice, mostly notice when you're just wearing headphones, you know? I like playing with the decay on the on the filter envelope and um, I'm also going to use the voice number to control that let's see if that works we're just going to have a little bit of modulation of the decay on the, the on the filter envelope That's kind of cool. You can hear that it's like as the voices rotate, it's going through a sequence of notes pretty much, a sequence of voices. So it's going from short to long in a, and it's in a, I don't know, it's, it's in a kind of polymetric cycle. I like that. I could just listen to this all day. All right. Maybe that's a bit much. Let's pull that back a little bit. Make it more subtle.
Getting dreamy today. It's that sound. Okay. Let's put something shiny and modulating on this hi-hats. It's bright enough. Look at that. I'm going to put a granular delay on this. Why not? Why would I do that? Let's see. Definitely in a chill mood today, can you tell? There we go. So it's like it's, a, it's putting a short delay on it because it's granular. It's spraying and moving it around a little bit, just giving it a bit of a uh, variation. Phasing and comb filtering in a subtle way. Why not? I mean, it could do the same, something similar with a chorus. It probably, you know, would sound almost the same, but I like this. Some low frequencies in there that don't need to be there. I like this. Yes, Luminous Cloud. You've been bugging me about grown folk electro. <laughs> Is that just like we're, we're keeping it chill and not too aggressive for us old fogies that just want to relax a little bit? But it's still fast. It's 141 beats per minute. It's got energy, right? But it's got this, it's the hypnotizing melodic pattern with the delay. It's keeping it chill. I mean, if I get rid of that and you turn that up loud and you put on, put on other sounds like, uh, that's a little less, <laughs> a little less chill, isn't it? That's going to come later, right? And we worked on some of these drum sounds a little bit last time I had this in here. I was like, tightened up this snare drum a little bit, happy with it. And then there's this big, noisy, crazy one, which I'm going to be careful with because it's really intense. That wasn't careful. I'm just hitting the... kind of going crazy on the keyboard down here where you can't see. I should get a top-down overhead shot so you can see when I'm playing. One of these days, I'll get another camera. I could use my iPhone to do it. Okay, next time. All right. I'm getting distracted. Let's 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 go back to the more chill kind of level. There's still a lot of power, you know? I mean, I'm going to turn it up in here. Right. Yeah, I mean, playing this in a big system would still... You know what I mean. It's, I hear something like that, I just want to close my eyes and kind of drift away with it. And we've got... Uh, started... This is how it ended last time. Uh... Just got that that note in there I wasn't sure about. Let's mute it. Definitely spacey. Okay. We have a, a subtle bit of a melodic variation because I have... Uh, just a progression of it going up and down by a semitone. Simple, just enough variation. Luminous Clouds asking for chords. We do have a chord. Oh, that was a little loud. Oop. Let's mute that upper note there. If 
I have it, maybe a longer release time. Sounds like the, uh, the filter envelope needs to be a little longer. Better. A little bright though. Let's bring down the filter fil uh, cutoff or the amount of modulation. Okay, I like that. More in the middle. I should start arranging it, right? What else have we got? There's the bass. It's got some nice sub in there, which I totally forgot about. Let me look at that. Yeah, look at that. That is fat. It's the kind of sub that won't come through on small speakers very well. Maybe you want to work on that a little bit. I, mean, I, could I could worry about it later. Just saturating it helps. Too loud though. EQ. Yeah, that's... It's funny. There, there's all, there's all those rules you're supposed to follow. Like you're supposed to high pass all the deep sub and out of sounds. Well, okay, on a hi hat, obviously you don't need to have any low frequencies, or most of the time you don't. But like something like this, like you're supposed to. They say high pass everything, and then you start nerding out about what how EQs work and how it's filters and phase cancellation happen actually it's all it's all delays ultimately <laughs> all these <laughs> all these effects it comes down to delay and uh, and phase offsets and stuff like that but like um yeah if i do this it creates a notch and then it ends up sounding different and hollow and do you even hear the difference and i don't know i've just had i'm just it always comes up people ask in class should i do this i don't know does it sound right if it's right if it sounds right and it's not causing problems then it's okay in my case, I was just thinking I should just lower that a little bit rather than cut it all out. That's also like that's EQ that's that EQ is totally wrong for mixing. You're never supposed to do stuff like that. But actually it sounds cool to bring some of those weird little digital noises out. That's what would happen if I put like an OTT on this and it would be bringing up all the quiet stuff. We'd hear those little details. Unnecessary. As long as it sounds okay in the mix, I'll have to, I'm not worried about whether this is messing up my kick drum yet or not. That comes later. I'm gonna go back and play with the Moog a little bit just to have fun. Oh, that's nice. I'm just sticking, I'm like creating counterpoint by increasing the, the decay time on certain notes.
I can do that in the arrangement or I could build it into the clip right now or I could use like a live LFO to modulate that. Automations or modulation in the clip is gonna be the easiest. I'm gonna duplicate that. Let's, let's put it in there and see. How would we do that? Modulation. This is going to scale, right? This, this is going to scale the existing value. So I've, if I want it to be longer overall, I need to increase it here. If that was, say, I need to figure out that's as loud as I want it, or not long, loud, as long as I want the decay to be, and then I can scale it. Getting there. That's what we're talking about. It takes a little finessing to get it. It's almost it was almost easier to just do it turning the knob and if I were to record the automation it already had what I want um, but that's automation not modulation modulation again is scaling the value it's not changing the value this is another question that comes up a lot when we're l working on teaching and learning how Ableton Live works um, all right I'm gonna get this right So I want that note. And those notes. Let's see if, I, if it works like this. No, it's got to go longer, right? You can hear it cutting off. Interesting. I wonder if it sounds different because I'm doing modulation and not um, automation. So. All right, we're going to figure this out. It sounds different. The scaling, I don't know why. We have to figure that out. We don't have to know why. We just have to know it sounds different. But somehow the, the per note automation, the per note modulation of that envelope, when I scale it, it's doing something different than when I increase and decrease the actual value. So, wow. You learn something new every time you experiment, right? I'm really nerding out on this today, aren't I? So this time I'm, I did it, I recorded it live. I'll probably end up, man, I'm getting stuck on this. I'll probably end up really doing this in the arrangement process because I don't know, I'm, or just flying it in with a controller or something and having fun sort of playing with the automation in the as I kind of go along with the arrangement. But uh, I'm 
Let me just fix this a little bit. Lots of fun. Just playing with that one thing is fun and, just, and interesting to listen to. Yes, Christian Lipke, you can record the modulation like the automation, I think. Actually, no. Let's clear that up. Hmm. I want to make sure I'm giving you the right answer before I commit to that. Can you record modulation in real time like can i control this because normally yeah like if i you know if i hit record sorry that's arrange that's the arrange record session record where i'm recording into the clip and, you, and i move this that's Automation. That's a little bit bonkers. It's really, let's get rid of that. I said, let's get rid of that. <laughs> it's going, I'm losing control. What's going on here? I mean, unless I'm missing something, I think you can't record the modulation in real time because it's it's doing a different thing. Now, Wheelspin has an interesting suggestion. Press record. <laughs> yes, P just put on an LFO and another LFO on the speed of the first LFO. Yeah, uh, that, I that's actually the first, before I started fooling around with the automation and modulation envelopes, I, I could just put an LFO on this. Um, I could do it in the... Wow, we've been stuck on this sound for a long time. What time is it? It's all <laughs> okay. Um, we're halfway through, just so you know, a little bit less than halfway through. Uh, we, we need to move forward a little bit, but l l let's look at this. Yeah, I could put the LFO uh, um, from the synth on there, and and but easily, more easily, I would use the live LFO. Let's sync that to two beat, two bars. And I want to I want to set the the phase. So it's um What do I want? I think I want 45. Yeah, at 45 the first beat is all the way down. And then and the first bar at the first beat is all the way down and then the second bar first beat is all the way up. And that's sort of what I was doing with that modulation. So let's try it. But too wide, right? I can reduce the depth. The shape of that, it's a little too smooth, right? I wonder if a triangle would do. Still really smooth. Can also reduce the range. We can play with the offset. So this works too, but it's not as precise as I would like. You know, if this were like, uh, uh, if I were able to change the shape of this waveform more precisely, there's probably a device that does it. One of you is going to suggest it in the chat any second now, I'm sure. So, and yeah, you could have fun with making this more complex by, um, you know, modulating that. Thank you. 
So I'm changing the shape of the first LFO with the second one. And making it sharper. Interesting. Okay, we're, again, we're kind of losing the plot here. Cool, good, good suggestion, wheel spin. Let's take a breath here since we're a little bit halfway through. Um, you know this is 343 TV. It's Selway Techno Saturdays, and today it's Selway Electro Saturdays here on 343 TV, brought to you by 343 Labs Music Production School in New York, where it's a beautiful day today. I want to go outside and ride my bicycle. I've said that before. It's something that I do. I go out and go on long rides and occasionally like go like overnight and camping and you know ride out to like a state park and that kind of thing. Really enjoy that. So yeah, today it would have been the perfect, this weekend would have been perfect, but it's also, you know, it's a Memorial Day, doing family stuff. We have Monday off. I am teaching tomorrow though. I got a synthesis of sound design class online tomorrow. And, you know, again, that's what 343 Labs does. We, we teach classes, music production, in all kinds of music production, Ableton Live. We have Logic. We do synthesis and sound design, uh, mixing and mastering, arranging, songwriting, uh, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, I mentioned there's, you know, there's a live performance class going on here right now. And uh, we do all this here in New York. We do all this in Berlin. We do it online. And we're starting our year program in the fall. And we've got, I think, a lot of signups. Like we're starting off with the bang. We've got a lot of people coming in here uh, and to do like much more intensive, like taking lots of classes and, you know, every day, right? We, we, this place is going to get even busier than it is already. So if you want to know more about all of that, you've got the links below in the description, of course. There's a site for the US and then there's a site for Berlin, but uh, the year program is actually kind of unified between online and our two locations. You could do both. You know, you could be in Berlin and take some classes and then come to New York and continue taking classes and fin start where you left off. So that's how it's working. Right. Um, let's see what you, what are you guys talking about in the chat? Hey, Doug, nice to see you. Glad to hear uh, have you here? And uh, we had some suggestions: sidechain compression, use multiband compression on the sub. Yeah, sometimes I do that. And uh, we got Christian Libka talking about the LFO tool being a little. Yeah, you're right. The, the LFO tool can do more precise shapes. But what's what's the there's the Max for Live device that c is more customizable. I believe it's Shaper. So that's what that's the live the Ableton equivalent of. Not quite. It's it's even it's still you know. Uh, LFO, LFO tool is, is, is a little more complex, but you can see this is where I would go in and do that more precise shaping that we were talking about. And then that could be looping at whatever rate that I would like. So yes, good, good suggestion there, Christian. And um, all right, I really got into modulation and the details of this one sound, but there's all this other stuff going on. And uh, I... You know, I'm going to take a sip of water here and then let's start laying it out on the arrangement and see what happens. Okay. All right, I'm not going to start with the bass. I'm not going to start with all of the drums. Not doing any, I'm, I'm just going to do a uh, linear arranging today. I'm just going to just, okay, start with this and then bring in this, you know, your typical uh, arrangement method. That. I'm getting distracted again. I feel like this kick needs some help. You can hear there's a little pop at the end of it. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mix the sound. I'm gonna tweak the sound later. And probably just, I, I feel like starting with uh, that, that Moog sound. could be nice. Maybe a little lower on the on the filter cutoff so it's a little darker in the beginning. All right. Could or rec 
record it in or drag it in? Let's do it the. I, I I do so much real time arranging in the beginning, especially like where I'll especially you know when, especially for hypnotic stuff like this, I'll just start recording and doing things, and that's really kind of the the fastest way. But I don't know. Let's let's be more a little structured about it today. All right. So I'm gonna bring this here. Look at all those LFOs doing, and sh the shape are doing nothing right now. <laughs> you probably can see it better if I bring back the main screen. There we go. Interesting comment here the, uh, from, from Wheelspin that the, the LFO modulation was not as emotional as when I did it in the automation. And... It, yeah, the feeling of like, oops, the feeling of, uh, especially when you're, you've got, if I, I don't have the MIDI controller here, but you know, just doing it in real time and following the flow of the music with that human touch, it's different. It's not as surgical as using like the synced LFO, right? So that's a, that, that makes sense. I, 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 I agree with you. Wow, we're really getting stuck on all that LFO stuff, aren't we? All right, so we've got this laid out for quite a long time it's like about two minutes of that maybe we'll just bring in the hi-hat square about the arranging today. Things are going to be coming in on 8s and 16 bar <laughs> sections. Alright, this one I'm just going to record in. Hey! Don't you... Oh, I see why it stopped because I had the record uh, arming on that track by accident. We'll fix that. This kick has a little bit of a bass note in it, which I like. It's playing the root. Bum, 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 bum. Maybe this, maybe a snare comes in there. Not, not the kick, the snare. All right, where is that going to be? We're going to be at the. I'm already losing track of. <laughs> already losing track of where I am. Okay, too many tracks not no, not named properly, not knowing where everything is. You've all been there. You know it. I'm just listening to this and thinking, you know, the drums are coming in. There's not a lot changing, but that's where going back and doing the arranging with the, the automation on that synth is going to come in. I, I, all right, I meant for this to come sooner. Let's get it in there. So that's going to be 25. I feel like something bigger needs to happen after 30, 32 bars. Maybe we do a little fill here. All right, so this sound doesn't have any velocity sensitivity. When, usually when I, like, when I do little fills, I like to, there to be some velocity variation so it's not too machine-like. Although this is electro, so machine-like is okay. But like that second note, for example, I'd love for that to be a little bit quieter. Let's fix that while I'm thinking about it. So I just need to assign... Oh, actually, the e this is easy. In pigments, you just have... There's a knob for amp modulation for velocity. So there. Now I fixed it. That's all I needed to do.
All right. Actually, I'll just duplicate that whole section with that fill. So I, I, I'll just keep that fill in unless I, I'll just delete it later or change it if I want to. Maybe we put the bigger kick drum here. Which is too loud somehow. How'd, they, how'd that happen? That doesn't sound right. Oh, I know why. Because I was always using it together with this other one. So those both need to come in at the same time. All right, so we'll call that kick one, or kick two, doesn't matter. Yeah. This way now I won't get lost, right? Name your stuff, name your tracks, don't be like me. Just getting it in there in the wrong place. And then back to arrange, and then let's edit and make sure that they happen where they're supposed to. All right. Something's still funny about the timing of that. I don't know if I pasted something in wrong, but it seemed like it's, maybe it's just me being sensitive. I'm a sensitive guy. Don't hurt me. Yeah, do you hear how it sounded all rushed right there? Why did it do that? Oh, I see, look at this. The snare got copied over off the grid. It was the snare messing us up. happens if we bring in all right i feel like i want more sound we've been leaning on this um uh moog simple synth all this time and talking about modulating it and making it expressive and i like it but like stuff like this needs to happen well, that really sets the tone doesn't it gets a little muddy maybe there's too much low end in the sound yeah you hear that that's where my, uh... all right, we'll just avoid that entirely. How embarrassing. <laughs> so yeah, I see this happens all the time where you like, you think you selected it properly and then you didn't. This time should be good. All right, so now the question, I like this ambient, dark ambient swell, right? Um, this drone that I made. And I, I, do I want to ha have it in the intro before the kicks come in? Let's try it. Maybe from 17. It's okay. Oh, it's coming, it's rising up a little bit. All right, let's happen. What happens when I let, if I just let it stop? Yeah, these are tricky. The envelopes are so long in this sound that it changes over like more than a minute. thing to do actually would be I'm going to make this clip 32 bars and extend that note out for that long. We have to be patient and wait for it. It's just getting real dark here. You can see what the Envelope. Look where we are in the envelope. See, it's going down. I 
and then it stops. I feel like it keep going. But I like the subtle, you know, increase in energy when the other uh, kick drums happen. Yeah, I'm going to let this, this is crazy. I'm going to make the, this, this, this note is going to play for 64 bars at uh, maybe not that long, but we'll see. There's something. All right, that's in there. Maybe another me melodic thing needs to happen there. All right, I don't even know what this is. Let's see. Oh, that's the bass. That's got to wait till later. We're not there yet. Some stuff dropped out. So this kind of has a sequence to it. It plays a lower note. Oh, I know. Okay. I'm composing now. We're going to not have this loop. Yep. Simple melody, but it works. And it resolves on the root. Remember all that? going to do that sometimes. Okay, what just dropped out? Aha. That little fill's working out. Need another layer of percussion, maybe? What's this? All oh, right. More crazy, spacey stuff. We have. All right, that's not a sound I want. I mean, I've talked about this many times before, but, um,. Sometimes I'll start arranging even when I don't have enough parts yet or because I don't have enough parts because I'll be at a certain point where I'm like, yeah, I like this and I know I need more, but I'm not sure what it is or, you know, or it, it, it can really become more clear if you start working with what you have and you start laying it out and structuring it, you'll get to a point where, you'll, where you will know, oh, it would be cool if this happened and then you get it or it would be, oh, I should change and make a melody like I just did. I like that when I was fooling around with that pad the last time I worked on that, I wasn't really thinking too hard about how I was going to develop it. It was just getting the idea down. And then now that I'm in the arrangement part, I'm actually still, I'm, you know, I'm still kind of composing and figuring out and taking what I sketched and developing it more. So, I mean, I guess this is pretty typical, right? <laughs> We're like composing and arranging in, on the timeline and uh, creating things as we think of them, right? Which is pretty pretty normal for composition i would say all right it's almost an hour we're going to wrap this up soon let's uh, i'm going to listen to this again and, and and see what what we can add before we run out of time and maybe i'll just go ahead and do a little bit of this automation while we listen on the on the decay of that synth I'm, as I'm hearing it, there's a little bit too much random modulation on it from the voices. It's not random, but it sounds random. It's also really easy. It's so, it's like, 
sensitive. It'd be better to have a knob map to this that I, and I could have it scaled. Could do that with a macro, actually. I'm gonna go back and do this better, better, but we get the idea. Something like that. And then something needs to happen here. Or just playing with that. But a new sound should come in or something more contrasting should happen there. And I need to be better at that. All right. And then we have the variation where it goes up and down. So where were we? Maybe here at 65. Maybe that's where that needs to happen. It's going to go ahead and put that in there. It, it would be helpful also. Sometimes I'll change the color just so I know. Okay, there's a there's a different pattern happening there. All right. We started a track today, basically. We started arranging a track and, and adding more to this track today. We also have uh, this one. That's got to come in when the main synth is lower, though, because they kind of fight each other a little bit. Be better when, yeah, I'll automate around that. probably bring this in there different variation that's kind of nice got to keep those drums going of course although it was kind of actually kind of nice for the hi-hat to drop out so maybe it was more these guys What was it that was continuing there that was nice? These guys. Not a bad little variation there. And they still haven't had the bass yet. The, the, the bass line could have come in there already. What happens if we do it here? Maybe it should come in right there. Because this all just sort of goes, yeah, hey, uh, mm, it's getting jumbled. All right. Down, down to the end of the show. Still, I'm kind of, I almost don't want to stop. I know you'll be like, don't stop, but I have to stop. I have to go. I got to get back to the family, do some weekend, Memorial Day stuff. But I'm glad we made some progress on this today. Yeah, just, I'm listening. You know, I, I, I have my notes. I know what I need to do. Uh, in terms of how to fix this, like the bass coming in, it's kind of buried 
by all that stuff. So the bass needs to come in. Well, the mix needs to be balanced better with that and the kick drum and how it's sort of sticking out or not. And I think those chords are a little bit loud. I turned them up too much. So they're really covering up things. Yeah, I got some notes. I'm going to get back to this and, and, and work on it a little bit more. And we'll, we'll check back in uh, in another stream and see where we're at. And, you know, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll work out some of the more time consuming stuff and then we'll go in and look at it and do some of the details. So thanks everybody for hanging out today. Nice to come back here on Saturday. It was on Friday last week um, and do a little bit of kind of chill, grown up electro for you guys. And uh, seeing some new names in the chat. Great to have you here. Welcome to the new people. Come back. And uh, to all the regulars, glad to have you here as always. Thanks very much. And have a good week. See you next time. Adios.